Hello, my name is Natalie Bolton, and this is my AP research presentation regarding the correlation between taste and test scores. Today, I will first be talking about how I developed my research question, including the prior sources that I researched in order to find my topic. Then I will move on to my methodology and how I performed my experiments, as well as the limitations of my research. After that, I will discuss my findings and the data that I gathered from my experiment. And finally, I will move on to my analysis of that data. First, the development of my research question. When trying to figure out what topic I wanted to conduct research on, I knew that I wanted to do something that I could relate to as a high school student. I also wanted to do something including human participants rather than testing on animals. Additionally, I wanted to work with quantitative data rather than qualitative data since I find it easier to work with and organize. Some of the existing research that I looked at first included a study by John Foray, which found that amongst eighth graders, those who chewed gum while um, conducting standardized math tests performed better. And another um, existing research that I looked at was by Hasegawa Y, who found that Participants who had a sour taste in their mouth while taking a cognitive test also scored better on that. The gap in the research that I found is specifically related to gum. There's plenty of research that shows that chewing gum while taking tests can improve scores. However, there was no research regarding what causes that increase, whether it's the act of chewing gum alone or the specific tastes and flavors of the gum. And that's what I sought to find in my research Leading to me to my final research question, how does the taste of gum impact test scores amongst high schoolers? Now my methodology and limitations. When I first started finding my methodology for my testing, I first needed to figure out what materials I was going to use. I decided to use three different flavors of gum as well as shortened versions of ACT tests. The first flavor of gum I used was Dentine Fire, which is a cinnamon spicy flavor. And then I used Crybabies, which are sour. And then Thalum Gum, which is a flavorless gum. I decided to use this one to see more specifically for if it's the act of chewing gum that impacts the increase in test scores or if the flavor has an impact. And then I decided to use short versions of the ACT test that I got from the official ACT website because a lot of the studies that I looked at with similar testing used standardized tests and also because I knew that the ACT would be rigorous enough to actually challenge students at a high school level and it included a variety of different subjects that students are often tested on in school such as English, math, and science. For my methodology, I gave each participant four tests that lasted approximately 15 minutes each the first test that the participants took was a control test. They took this one with no gum just to establish a baseline of what score they would typically get on their own with no variable stimuli. I then had them take different versions of the test with the different flavors of gum. I also wanted to try to simulate a testing environment as much as possible, so I made sure that the room that the students were testing in was quiet, and they were also permitted to use a calculator on the math portion of the exam. Finally, at the end of each test, I asked each participant to rate the flavor of gum they had based off how much they liked it from one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best. Some of the limitations of my study include that it was difficult to exactly, exactly simulate a testing environment um, due to noise levels and also because of the academic pressures that are found in real testing environments. In an actual classroom, students would likely fa face the academic pressure of feeling like they need to perform at their best in order to obtain a good grade in the class. However, this was not present in my experiment, which could have caused students to not be performing at the top level that they could be. Another limitation of my study was human error. Um, for example, I had one participant who was very talkative throughout the test when they weren't supposed to be and could have disrupted another test taker that was taking the test at the same time. Or a different participant I had, um, while chewing the sour gum, filled out their test as quickly as possible and ran out of the room screaming to spit the gum out because of how much they disliked it, which obviously may have had an impact on their score for that specific test. And then finally, the sample size. I had a pretty small sample size of students from only one high school, so it's possible that my data I gathered is not representative of all high schoolers in general. Moving on to my findings. 
when I first organized my data, I decided to organize it based off what percent each student got um, from the different tests, including the control, sour, spicy, and um, flavorless gum. Um, the y-axis over here is the percent correct that the students got, and then along the x-axis on the bottom, you can see which participant completed which grouping of the tests. The control is in the black bar, sour and tan, spicy and white, and flavorless. Spicy and blue and flavorless and white. You can see overall there's not a specific trend where one flavor of gum caused all the participants to score their best or their worst. I then organized it looking at the average score that students got on each flavor. The highest average score overall was with the sour gum at 64.29%, followed by the spicy gum at 62.64%, then the control at 62.5%, and finally with the lowest overall average score was the flavorless gum at 54.46%. Although there was not one specific gum that caused the highest score for every single participant, this does prove my original line of thinking that it's not solely the act of chewing gum that improves test scores, seeing as how the flavorless gum that was just chewing with no flavor actually caused students to score lower than their control. Because there wasn't one specific flavor that stood out, I then organized my data a little bit differently to look at it from a different perspective. I used the question that I asked students at the end of each test, rating the gum from one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best of how much they liked it. I then looked at the flavor that each individual student rated the highest and labeled it their favorite, the one they rated the lowest and labeled it the least favorite, and the one in the middle as the middle. This graph is set up just like the other one with the percent correct on the y-axis, and horizontally along the bottom is the grouping of tests that each student um, completed. You can see that for every single student in the blue, um, they all scored their highest with their favorite flavor of gum, and in the tan and gray, they did not score as well for flavors that they did not like as much. This leads me into my analysis. Overall, um, the change in percent from the control, the highest was with the favorite flavor of gum at 18.99%, and the middle and least favorite flavors of gum actually caused students' scores to decrease from the control by 11.41% and 13.69%. This means that flavor does have a significant impact when it comes to whether students' scores are improved or not, and it is not simply the act of chewing gum alone that improves students' test scores. And the significance of this is that it can help high school students improve the test scores by chewing specific flavors of gum while they're taking tests. This has been my AP research presentation regarding how taste interacts with test scores. These are my sources. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, some, some questions. Um, how did the choices you made when you were designing or implementing, implementing your research method impact your process? Um, well, when I was designing my research, I decided to do three different flavors of gum, which would be four 15-minute tests overall, totaling up to over an hour worth of time participants would have to um, volunteer for this research so it was really difficult for me to find willing participants that were willing to give up that much time meaning that in my research I had a much smaller pool of applicants that I had to work with okay thank you um, <clears throat> how do your findings provide direction for future research my findings can help um, be built off of for further research and how taste impacts cognitive ability, as well as exploring more gaps in the research related to this area, such as exploring how the sugar content of gum might impact standardized test scores. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then, um, what was the most important research skill you developed as a result of the process, um, and how might you apply it to future endeavors? I think one of the most important skills I learned was the ability to analyze um, past research and also data. Um, analyzing scientific research papers wasn't something that I had done a lot before in the past, but now I feel a lot more confident in it. And I think that along with the statistical analysis skills that I've gained will help me with further research projects in the future. Okay, thank you. All right.